NASA's latest mission to the moon now grounded until at least October. We talked with an aerospace expert from Colorado about delays in launching Artemis 1. A popular Rhino restaurant is closing its doors today. What pushed the preservery to shut down its business and what's next for its owners and the brand? The dog days of summer are almost over. This Labor Day, we say goodbye to time outside, laying by the pool and playing at the water park. How Coloradans are wrapping up the holiday weekend before fall gets into full swing. It will still certainly feel like summer over the next few days. Good morning and happy Sunday to you as we take a live look at the sunrise over downtown Denver. Another beautiful hot day is in store. Gosh, that's just gorgeous. What a perfect angle that mm -hmm. was at. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jessica Crawford. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Welcome to Denver 7 News. Let's talk about the heat we're expecting later on today. It is really beautiful and mild right now as the sun comes up. Plenty of sunshine expected for the day today. Very little cloud coverage across the state. Nice and cool up into the mountains early on, but the heat will build once again this afternoon. We're expecting 70s and 80s into many of our mountain towns, even some low 90s moving into some of our northern and central high country. But right now it's 62 degrees in Denver. Winds are sustained from the west just at eight miles per hour. A bit breezy and hazy for today here across the Front Range, but a lot of that stagnant air creating an air quality warning for Denver north and east until at least four o'clock this afternoon. Unhealthy for sensitive groups, so if you do fall into that category, probably want to limit time outdoors for today. This this morning really comfortable for the doggos by nine o'clock getting to 70 degrees, but it's going to be upper 80s by lunchtime and daytime highs soaring to the high 90s. Denver, Greeley out across northeastern Colorado. There are those low 90s expected Steamboat Springs and Eagle. When will it cool down? How many 90s are on the seven day forecast? I'll show you coming up. Yeah, and like Katie just said, well above normal temperatures and near record highs are expected over the next several days. Because of this, doctors are warning of the potential dangers of prolonged heat exposure. The elderly, the very young, tourists, and people with chronic health issues are the most at risk. Doctors say to check in on those older relatives that you have this weekend, especially those who are homebound. And for those visiting Colorado this Labor Day weekend, stay hydrated and know your limitations. If if you're heading out on a hike or to the pool, remember sunscreen, loose fitting clothing, and don't wait until you're thirsty to drink water. Heat stroke is a serious illness and it only takes minutes to become life threatening. All great reminders on this hot Sunday and the meteorological end to summer. It's technically not for a few more weeks, but Labor Day is often considered the unofficial into <laughs> summer because the outdoor pools close for the fall. Number seven's Christian Lopez is live at one of the biggest pools and outdoor water parks in Colorado as the clock runs out for us to enjoy. So Christian, <laughs> how are people feeling as they soak up these last few days of summer? Well, I know I'm pretty bummed about it, but this is the last weekend that several pools across the Denver metro area will be open, including Waterworld. Right now, things are pretty quiet, but we are expecting to see crowds of people showing up when they do open at 10 o'clock this morning. It is going to be a hot rest of the Labor Day weekend with temperatures hitting those high 90s. So what better way to cool off than to stop by here one last time while you still can? Well, we caught up with guests this weekend who said that they were thrilled to enjoy their favorite water rides one more time time before summer ends and the water was great and things were surprisingly not too crowded. This is probably the least busy I've seen it. It I was impressed. I was thinking, man, we're going to have to get an itinerary and we hit all the rides we wanted to. It is usually a lot busier because we've had season passes for the last two years and it, like you had to wait in line forever, but today was pretty chill, which was awesome. And the season started out with a severe lifeguard shortage all across the state, and that actually delayed the opening of several pools and parks this year. And he actually told us that he was a lifeguard and he decided to become a lifeguard to help out with that shortage. I think it's a really nice job. It's a little hot, but you know, you get tan. And just being nice to people on the rides and helping kids out, it makes you feel good. The American Lifeguard Association said that that shortage actually impacted one out of three pools all across the state this year. Now, if you want to come out to Waterworld, it will be open for two more days today and tomorrow. So they'll open from 10 to 6 today and then from 10 to 5 tomorrow. So get out here while you still can. We are live from Waterworld this morning. I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. All right, Christian, thank you. Got to appreciate these last few days.
Well, the Federal Aviation Administration and Department of Homeland Security say they'll be putting more focus on tightening up security at small airports after an airport worker in Mississippi allegedly stole a small airplane. Investigators say 29 year old Corey Wayne Patterson stole the plane early yesterday morning from the Tupelo Airport and threatened to crash it into a local Walmart on purpose. Police say negotiators were able to talk to Patterson while he was in the air and convinced him to back off his threat. There is good news to report about Jackson, Mississippi's water crisis. In a Facebook post this weekend, city leaders say that most of Jackson's residents should now have near normal water pressure, but the city is still under a boil water notice. Teams from Georgia and Florida water associations are on site to help repair and restore some of the automated systems. City officials did warn residents they may have to do a controlled burn of ammonia due to a leaking tank there, but they say that shouldn't pose a threat to the general public. Well, the second attempt to launch NASA's Artemis 1 was scrubbed again after a fuel leak was discovered. NASA tweeted out this photo last night saying the team will be standing down for the current launch period, which ends on Tuesday, and the next launch period isn't until October. Yeah, and while many space enthusiasts, they were disappointed by this news, it's actually a common occurrence with these types of missions. Denver 7's Amy Wattis spoke to a Colorado expert who's breaking it all down and giving us some insight on what's next for this mission. We do not launch until we think it's right. That was the message from NASA Administrator Bill Nelson following a second failed attempt to launch the Artemis 1 rocket to the moon. CU Boulder Professor Jack Burns, who snapped a picture in front of the rocket back in June, says that's the appropriate measure to take. These spacecraft, these rockets are very complicated. So it's not at all surprising that it didn't go the first time. Uh, on Monday or it didn't go the second time. Burns says it may take several more times before the rocket heads into space. NASA stopped the Artemis 1 launch from happening Saturday after teams say they encountered a liquid hydrogen leak while loading the propellant into the rocket's core stage, which NASA says it will assess over the next few days. Colorado-based Lockheed Martin is the prime contractor for the Orion capsule, which is attached to the rocket and will be flown without astronauts on this mission as the first step in returning people to the moon. Lockheed Martin tweeted that it appreciates the work NASA is doing and will continue to keep the Orion spacecraft ready for the next launch opportunity. They designed it, uh, they built it, uh, and they're building capsules. They've already completed uh, building uh, the Artemis II capsule and they're working on the Artemis III. Artemis 2 will go around the moon with a crew and return, while Artemis 3 will land on the moon's surface and also have a crew. Burns says with the ultimate goal of continuing to grow the space program for years to come. It's about creating a sustainable presence in space in which we're going to learn to live and work first on the moon um, and then on Mars and then uh, beyond. That was Amy Wattis reporting. So when will the third launch attempt take place? NASA says it has decided to forego additional launch attempts in early September, so it could be several more weeks or even into October, depending on the launch window before all eyes are back on Kennedy Space Center. The Lone Star State continuing to show up in support of the Uvalde community gripped by tragedy. How some of the state star athletes are letting Uvalde know that they're not alone and their loved ones are never forgotten.